Okay, now, when you walk up to the station, you're going to be very nervous. You're going to go through the process of reading the S-bar. Uh, you're going to go through the process of uh, the CE is going to read off some information to you. Once they finish reading off the information to you, they're going to hand you some paperwork. You're going to go through that process of reading the S-bar like we talked about a little bit earlier. You're going to make the decision, and we are going to decide, that based on the information that was given to us, we're going to check off the intermittent urinary catheter insertion because we decided that the patient had not voided for more than whatever the time frame was that Excelsior gave me, and we did a um, bladder scan, and the bladder scan was greater than the parameter that Excelsior gave me. We, once we determined that, we've gone through, read the entire S-bar, made our decisions, we're going to click that box, show it to the CE, and then they're going to give you the head nod, and then we're going to go ahead and go through the process of uh, uh, setting our table up to perform this intermittent cath. Now, everything gonna be, that you need is going to be at the table right here. The mannequins, sterile gloves, clean gloves, everything is going to be here at the table. So I'm going to set that paperwork over here to the side, out of my way. If I wanted to write a mnemonic on this sheet of paper, I could just set it aside so that I can kind of have access to it and look at it on a regular basis. That's another thing that you could do. So the first thing that I'm going to do after I've shown my CE is I'm going to, uh, they give me the head nod, is I'm going to gel my hands. So this is the first process where I've kind of cleaned my hands with this gel that's sitting at the table right here. Okay? Then I'm going to pick the correct mannequin. So I know that there's a vagina under here, so um, that's why I picked this one. But you'll have to find the, the correct mannequin and bring it over to the table and set it in the position where you think that you're going to want to set it. And once, once again, once again, if uh, this setting is set up, you're going to try to begin the process of setting this up the way you want it to go, the way you think it's going to go. So the other thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need to have the calf kit that I know that I'm going to have to use. I'm going to need a pair of sterile gloves. Um, and then, so I've got my sterile gloves right here, I've got my calf kit right here, and as I begin to open things, I'm setting a certain amount of uh, space, blank space up right here so that I can put my drape underneath the patient. The drape is inside here. So this, when I open this up, everything inside is going to be sterile. So I'm going to use this to, um, I'm going to manipulate it here in just a minute. So now I've done this right here, I've got my, uh, everything set up, I could go ahead and uh, open this up or I could leave it in the package. It's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and open up my sterile gloves. And remember, if you can read the numbers on the sterile gloves, it's in the correct position, orientation, for you to use it. Okay? And for correctness, I'm going to make sure that I'm using a guide here so that I can make sure that you guys get everything exactly correct. Okay? So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Once I have my... Uh, everything's set up the way I want it to be. I'm going to take the um, the paperwork that I have. It has the paperwork's information, the patient's uh, name, date of birth, and medical record number. Up, and I'm going to walk over. The mannequin may have an ID on it. The CE may have an ID. It depends on your testing site that you're at. One or the other, there will be an ID band for you to identify this patient. And it is a critical element. You must identify the patient. Now, if you want to walk up... Whenever you, as long as you don't start the process, any time before that, you can identify the patient. Does that make sense? In other words, you could identify them, then wash your hands, or wash your hands, then identify them. As long as you go, haven't started the process of opening things up and getting ready to cap the patient, you will satisfy that critical element. So I'm going to identify the patient. We're going to suggest that you use all three patient identifiers, name, date of birth, and medical record number. And here's kind of how you're going to do it. So I'm going to look at the ID band, and I'm going to say, Linda Smith, Linda Smith, date of birth 5-5-1945, date of birth 5-5-1945, medical record number 12345, medical record number 12345. I have satisfied that critical element. It's not, you're not going to go, uh, okay, I see your name is, yep, that's correct. You're not going to do it that way. Verbalize both of those things twice, all three identifiers, name, date of birth, and medical record number. I'm going to set this back over here to the side again. And then I'm going to 
uncover my patient and I'm going to so this mannequin right here is not the exact mannequin that you're going to be using it's very close you can have many many different types of mannequins to, to, to choose from okay you can build your own you can purchase one of these they're very inexpensive uh, but the one that you use is going to be it will stick to the table with these little stoppers on it and it'll be very very uh, sturdy so you don't have to worry about anything you'll once you pick that you set it up you're going to uncover it so now the mannequin is uncovered the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my cath kit I'm going to make sure that I don't contaminate anything okay so this cath kit is going to come like this right here so just remember that when you do open up any cath kit you always open it away from you first so I'm going to take this flap right here I'm going to open it away then I'm going to open the left and the right You'll notice I don't have any gloves on my hands and I'm touching at the very edges. This has actually been redone before, so I'm going to... And then I'm going to orient this to the table a little bit better, like so. And then, watch this. I've got clean hands, right? I'm going to reach in, I'm going to grab the corner of this drape right here. And as I lift it up, you'll notice that it's unfolding itself. It will be like that. The very next thing I want you to think about in your mind is I'm a matador. I'm a matador. Toro. You know what I'm talking about? Bulls coming at you like this right here. You've got the cape to your side like this right here. The shiny side is facing me, and I want that facing downward. So I'm just going to drape the patient like this right here. That little corner right there, that's bugging me. I would leave it that way. I would just leave it. But if you wanted to, you could reach around like this right here at the very edge of it and open it up so that it stayed open. And look at there, it's not wanting to do that. So it's closing back on me. So for these purposes, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Is that fair enough for you guys? Okay, now I could slide this down until it touches or comes close to touching right here. Now I've established my sterile field. You'll notice that I did not drape my patient like this right here. If, you, if I'm holding the corner of these, this drape right here, is my arm not reaching over that sterile field? Did I not did break the uh, sterility of that field? That's why you drape like this right here as opposed to reaching over like this right here. Okay? Yes. Yeah, I want to see some heads nodding. Okay, I got it. So, now that we've got this set up right here, if I wanted to get another shot of gel, I could. I could bring this right over here, give myself another shot of gel. The only downfall, and nerves are going to cause you to gel a lot at this station, but the only downfall to getting a lot of gel on your hands right here is you have to wait for it to dry before you can put these sterile gloves on. So now what I need to do is I need to put my sterile gloves on. Try your best not to let your hand rest over this right here. Try your best not to do that. You should have plenty of room to open up and establish your sterile field here and have everything set up in a manner to where you just flow right into the patient. You also notice that my gloves are pretty snug on the tips of my fingers. These are sevens right here, and I try my best to get them as snugly as possible on my hands. You don't want a lot of additional um, material hanging off the tips of your fingers because you could touch somewhere and not even realize it. That's why you want to have them fairly snug. Now here, this is a, uh, you can use your thumb to separate the cuff right here. But once you've inserted your three fingers into this glove right here, pull your thumb up out of the way. So my thumb is going to be up out of the way like this right here. I'm not reaching in here like this. I've got my thumbs up like this. And then I'm going to insert my other hand. OK, 
Okay, now hands are above my waist. I'm going to do my best to operate up here above my waist. Keep my hands up here in a very dramatic little pose so that I maintain the sterility of these sterile gloves now. Okay? Now, then the very first thing I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the process of moving this tray over to my sterile drape. Now, th this drape inside right here is sterile. So this tray right here is sterile. Okay? Completely sterile. I'm going to lift it up and move it over to the patient so that when I do get my cath in, the cath is, winds up with the tip of it inside this tray right here. So these caths right here, these trays have this little indentation. I'm going to just come do this right here, bring it over, and set it right here in front of my patient. I'm going to open up my swabs. There should be three swabs. I can drop this in a trash can. I can drop it on my sterile glove thing. But I want to set it up so that I have access to it. Put it in the back. Now, you're go these are prepackaged for Excelsior, exactly the way they want them done. And you're going to have one to three mLs of water inside of your syringe. They don't use lubrication because lubrication has a tendency to tear up these uh, latex mannequins. And because of that, it's just going to be water in a syringe like this right here. So all you're going to have to do is pick this syringe up, orient the cath properly, Lubricate the tip of this of the uh, syringe, I mean tip of the uh, cath, and this can go in the trash can. Now, the very next thing, I'm prepared to go ahead and access my patient. Once you have touched your patient with your left hand, your left hand is dirty now, it cannot come away from the patient until you finish the process. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to spread the labia majora. And I'm going to reach in and grab my first swab, and I'm going to swab away from myself first. And I'm going to swab the labia minora downward. This goes into the trash can. Students have taken this and dropped it on top of their sterile gloves uh, package also, but trash can is a good place. It's good to have to pull the trash can right over here to you so that it's close to you. The next one is going to be the labia minora close to you. Straight down, trash. And lastly, the last one is going to go straight down the middle. So now I'm ready to go ahead and uh, proceed forward with the cat. The landmarks are going to be very good. They're going to be very obvious. You're going to have a big hole on the bottom and a smaller hole on top. You want to go to the smaller hole on top. That's the urethra. So you just reach in. You pick the tip of the cath up. And you insert the cath into the urethra two to three inches. There's not going to be any urine coming out. So you just want to hold it there for three, four, five seconds. And once you've finished, you pull it back out, you rest it inside the tray, lift this hand up right here, set this over here to the side like this right here, then you reach underneath and you take the drape that you used to rest the container on, and you reach up and you wipe the vagina from the top to the bottom, and then you... Redrape the, drape the patient. This, of course, would go in the trash can or wherever it, the receptacle is that they have. You would move, remove your sterile gloves. What do I have to do every time I remove a pair of gloves? Gel, Gel your hands. And now I'm going to sit down and write my narrative notes. Okay? So once this is all disposed of into the trash can of where I'm going to place it, I'm going to fold this up real nice and neat, and I'm going to use it again multiple times. Uh, I'll actually use folded up paper towels to, to drape once, I, once these kind of get worn out. But I'll move this over to the side, and then I'm going to get my paperwork.
and then I'm going to fill out my clinical notes. And just to kind of give you an idea of what the clinical notes may look like, you could say uh, at 16.30 bladder scan will reveal 240 mLs of retained urine in the bladder. Per doctor's order, sterile intermittent catheterization performed with a, 15, with a 14 French catheter. No resistance noted during procedure. Now, there was no urine there, right? So there's no reason to chart urine. So that's the chart. That's kind of an example or a sample of what you would chart whenever, if you were to do this task right here. And once you've finished filling that out, you sign it. You put ECS in at the end of your name. You put your pen down, and you're like, okay, did I, act, did I do everything that I needed to do? Did I do it according to the way I wanted to get it done? Yep, I think I did. You look at the CE. And they're going to ask you a question. They're going to say, have you completed all the critical elements for this station? You're going to be forced to say yes or no. Okay? When you say yes, it's done. It's over with. At that point, they're going to look at your charting, making sure all the charting is good. They were watching you perform the process. They're going to look at your charting, make sure all the critical elements are there for the charting. They're going to put the paperwork down. They're going to say, congratulations, you passed right there on the spot. And that's how the sterile station works as it, as it relates to the sterile intermittent catheterization. Okay?